Welcome to CSB TV's Celebration of Women's History Month. We will be looking back at some of our women guests who are making history in today's presence. Let's take a look. You're watching The Ready Writer, a show where I get to speak to writers of all different genres, mediums, and experiences. The Ready Writer. Are you ready? Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Ready Writer. I am your host, Casey Bell, and today's guest writer is Julie Serzak. Let's get into this interview. So my first question for you is, what point did you realize you needed to write a book? Well, we were in business for, you know, many years, sort of entrepreneurs, different, um, different businesses we had. And at the age of over 60, we stopped uh, working in business. And I looked around at all the seniors, you know, and they were all feeling just by talking to people, people, people had lost their purpose. It was as if they just didn't feel like they were connecting anymore and they, were, they, they didn't have a life anymore. And I felt, you know, this is something that can change. We can actually really be inspired um, as we get older. And how do I get to people to show them, you know, you can do anything. You don't have to go and play bridge and golf and, and garden. I mean, I, I wrote a short film and I directed it. I execu executive produced another one. I wrote a song and I felt, you know, I want to get up on stage in front of thousands of people and say, hey, guys, you know, we can do it still. Our life hasn't ended because we've retired. Um, I just want to be inspirational. And I thought the words were just there. I just knew there was so much that I, I wanted to say and so much that I could do that would connect with, with others. And so mm -hmm. I started writing a book and I knew absolutely nothing about writing books. So there you go. <laughs> so let's talk about your book. It's called, I'm now called a senior WTF. That's Hopefully right. people know what that means by now. If not, they have to look it up. Talk about the book and um, what's in it and, you know, a, a brief summary of the, of the book. It covers all different subjects. First of all, it's, it's um, relatable subjects like medical checks and downsizing and um, travel as a senior and all those type of things that, that seniors are doing now. Um, but then it's funny situations like, you know, does your partner snore <laughs> and do you sleep in separate rooms now? And, and, and things like, so there's a funny aspect, but there's a thought provoking aspect. And then there's also, um, you know, what's the future? Where are we? Eternity, death, all those deep subjects as well. Um, so it's like, a, a, it's a mixture of all different, it's sort of a commentary because it's a bit of, of what I've experienced, but it's also a commentary on what I feel about certain situations and, and seeing if other people relate as well to that. And I really enjoyed writing it. I really did. What have you learned about this part of your life that's different from, you know, your 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s? What would you say this part of your life has taught you um, that's different from your pre um, previous years? I think when you were younger, you're so involved in the, the to-do list yeah. of everything that has to be done. You have children, you're running around, you're trying to keep all the balls in the air, you know, not only you're working, but you've got to come home and feed everybody. And there's this pressure, and I see it in young families, they're just how they're coping, and especially as they're now homeschooling, um, and so you don't actually have in a way that sort of that peace where you can just sit for a while and think and have some clarity and really go back to, you know, my, my background was also in the entertainment industry. I used to sing and record, um, but I sort of gave away part of me to keep my family secure. And I sort of feel now that everyone's found their own feet, that I've got time to breathe now and I'm clear about what I want to do. Can I be creative? Of course I can. Am I f fearful of failure? Of course we all are, but you know, when you get older, you're not as fearful. 
you know, you, you, it doesn't matter. You just give it a go. And I think where then everything was dependent on supporting my family. And of course it still is. Now I've got a little bit of space where I can think about what makes my heart flutter, what makes me tick, you know, that's, that's sort of where I'm at at the moment. So in the beginning, you said you had no clue of what to do as far as writing. So can you bring us just a brief journey of your publishing um, journey? How, do, how did you even begin to start? Because I know that's the number one thing people say is, how do I start? So can oh, you share your journey with us? Of course. Okay. I started um, knowing absolutely nothing about nothing. And also seeing as a little bit more tech challenged as well. So the, it's a bigger learning curve, I believe, to, to even just writing a book. And I think what happens initially is that there are a lot of, you, you can go and say, how do I write a book? How do I publish a book? And you go online and there are thousands of people with suggestions and courses and you do this and you do that. And the minute you click on that, you seem to get all these emails from thousands of different people and you can't even get through them and you get confused. So what my decision was, I'm going to research this and then I'm going to find some, somebody. I didn't want to go with a publisher. Um, I'd, I'm too much of a control freak. I didn't want my voice to be changed because there's a, there's a bit of spunkiness in it and I didn't want that to, to, to change. Um, I, I know what cover I want because I'm creative and I love creatives. I wanted the cover to be the cover I wanted. And I really, really put my head down and I learned. So what I did is I researched different self-publishing options. And I latched onto a self-publishing school that had an amazing course. It, it's the self-publishing school, it's called, um, situated in the US. So of course, we had a bit of a time difference. And I was sometimes doing lectures very early in the morning. But I followed that course step by, I cut out all the other noise. Because, of course, everyone else was coming with an, oh, you've got to do this and you've got to do this. And I said, no, following one, one line of action and I'm going to do it properly. And, you know, the funny thing is you think you've finished one section. Oh, I've written the book. Oh, yeah. Well, now you know what you have to edit it. Oh, I've got to edit it. Okay. But I didn't edit it myself. I researched editors. I sent it to a professional editor. Because if you have a well-edited book and you have a very attractive um, cover that will attract your avatar, um, your, your results are going to just be so much more spectacular. So I did that. I finished a book, then I edited, and then, oh, I've got to try and set up a landing page or a website. So I, I learned that section. Then, then what's an ISBN? I have no idea what an ISBN was, but I researched that. And so by following the course, I got to the end and I got it up on Amazon and we've got it into all the bookstores. And it was just a slow step-by-step -step process, but not getting confused by all the noise that was going. I think that was the biggest tip that I got from that. Okay, so your last two questions. First, can you give us some advice to the senior citizen who believes it's over, even though it's not? What they, um, some advice on how they can restart their life at this stage in their life? I think what happens is that people say, oh, you know, you're a senior, you now need to go and find your purpose. Well, how do you even start to look for your purpose? I mean, where purpose? What is purpose? Where do you find that? And I think you've just got to maybe look at the magic. What, what were you curious about maybe when you were younger that might now evolve again now? Or what is a passion that you wanted to try but you were fearful of trying? and give it a go. And my thoughts have always been, don't try and get to the top of the ladder straight away. Just one step at a time. Do it, give it a go. And you might find you absolutely love it. I mean, who would have thought I'd write a short film and then direct it? I had to go online to work out, how do you direct a movie? And get all the equipment in and learn and pull in people who knew something. And you find that there's something that really will, will make you, you know, I sat down last night and I was writing and I felt, wow, I love this. I just love this. Now, who would have thought that a year ago? And that's the same with, with now. Be curious. Be a senior, but be curious. Don't settle into, I mean, some people want to settle down and settle back. And that's, of course, their choice. But we're still relevant, and we don't want to lose our relevancy as we get older, you know. So that's my thing. One step at a time. Find what makes your heart tizzle. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, and some advice for those who are not seniors yet. Things that they should be doing now and what they can look forward to when they get older. I think, you know, one's got to realize that we all think we're going to have a long life. So I think it's okay if you're in this stressful situation that you're in when you're younger, that's okay. Um, because everybody's sort of like running around in that. But there is a future when you get older and one needs to have just the peace and the expectation that it's, it's not the end. One doesn't need to get depressed. One doesn't need to, um, to fall apart when you get older. Loneliness is a terrible thing. Make really good friends and keep those friends and honor those friends and, and give back too. You know, if you, if you give back, you always find that there's so much love that, that, that comes back to you. It's just a karma thing, I suppose. You know, it's that type of thing. Yeah. Thank you for watching. I want to thank our guest, Julie Surzak, for sharing her time and her journey with us. And I also want to thank you, the audience, for watching. Please subscribe. Have yourself a great day. You're watching The Ready Writer, a show where I get to speak to writers of all different genres, mediums, and experiences. The Ready Writer. Are you ready? Hello, it's time for another episode of The Ready Writer. I am your host, Casey Bell, and today's writer is Megan Mesmer. Let's get the show started. Okay, so what was the earliest memory of you, or did you, were you a writer as a child, or did this just happen after getting into the business as far as writing for scripts? Yeah, I actually did write as a child. I used to write stories all the time, um, but it, it's weird. When I got into film, I never considered myself a, a writer, and it's just now something that I'm coming back to. I'm a storyteller, and what I've realized is that yeah that the skill the craft of writing is something you can acquire and so um that's what i've been doing over the last couple years or more now is this is the craft so and when um so your first project so to speak when how did that happen as far as you writing? becoming a writer for a project um I'm trying to think what I would consider my first project. So the, I think the first project I considered myself a writer on was a web series that um, I, I mentioned this in the other show. Um, I went back to the UCLA professional producers program and I wanted to make a pilot. And so I partnered with a girl that I thought was super funny and I loved her. And I was like, I have this idea for a show. Can you help me write it? 
um, because I didn't trust myself as a writer. So we sat at coffee shops throughout Los Angeles for several, several months. And then we wrote, I think it was again, like six episodes of this web series. And then we shot uh, the, the pilot or like a sizzle, if, if you know what that means. Sizzle is like a trailer for what we thought the show would be and look like. And so we had a blast. As a writer, I'm the type of writer that I like improvise it. I act it out because, you know, I started in acting. Um, and she would sit there and like write it <laughs> on the page. She would write like this. She would take what I was doing, you know, and she would riff on it on the page. And then um, I would, you know, then we'd edit it and stuff. Um, so that was my first thing. And actually that project, we got, got picked up um, to Zoe Saldana's company. We got interest um, and they wanted to make it. And I was like, oh my God, this is insane. You know, we pitched it to them. They loved it. We were like, oh my God, we're going to make this thing. <laughs> and then um, they, when I came back to film it, I found out that that Lionsgate, they had lost their overall deal with Lionsgate. So they were scrapping all their projects and I was like, dang it. <laughs> so I was yelling at my dog, sorry. Oh. <laughs> so when you write or come up with a project, is it because it's a homework project or is, does it just come out of nowhere? Do you, what's inspiration? or does each one have its own story of inspiration? So I've never, I probably will never write something that isn't coming from something that inspires me. Like I'm, what I'm saying is I'm not a writer for hire. Um, I don't think I will ever be a writer for hire. I think that the, the stuff that I write is all because I'm inspired by a story and, and I wanna see it done. I'm working on a series right now um, that we will write a pilot for. Um, but that is, it's a World War II, it's all female um, fighter pilots in World War II. And like, never heard this story before. And we're, we're it's, so, it's so ridiculous, it's based in truth. And I'm like, why is this not a show? And so that sort of stuff inspires me. Um, we talked about my other show, which is about gentrification in Atlanta. Um, that is from personal experience, um, was where that show was really written from. Um, so yeah, I, I'm inspired by, honestly, I'm inspired by truth, by, by true stories mostly. And so after you write it, um, do you get help or do you get co-writers or do you get, um, editors or, um, someone else's opinion? Like, how does that all happen? Yeah, definitely. So when I wrote my series that we just finished shooting, uh, Intersection, I ha I'm a part of a, of a writer's group that is, I mean, several of them are on, that are writers for shows in the industry right now. And so I would bring my episodes to that group and I'd get feedback and notes and things that they didn't understand. Um, or I'll send it out to some of my colleagues that I trust in the industry. Um, either executives that I've met over the years or people that I trust um, that have a good knack for story. You always cool. need notes. Yes. So school does teach you how to spell correctly and how to proper grammar and all of that. But when you get into the writing business, there's a lot of things you learn that school never teaches you. So what are some of those things you learned along the way about the writing in entertainment business that kind of shocked you or you just didn't know because it wasn't taught? Well, again, I didn't go to film school. So there's everything that I learned about writing in, in this business. Um, I learned like on my own through books and things like that. Um, one, one, uh, the mat, you know, masterclass online. Yes. I took Shonda Rhimes as masterclass and I was like, this lady, um, that was a huge, helpful uh guidance for me while i was sitting there trying to break down my series um i've i've read robert mckee's book story several times that's a like a good one and then um save the cat but that's mostly for film i would say um 
but yeah, I go back to Shonda Rhimes' master class often. <laughs> so other than <clears throat> educating yourself, any tips for a writer out there who has their script, but they don't know the first step to take to get it produced, directed out there? Hmm. I mean, I'm a huge advocate for making your own work. Um, what, so that, that's kind of my whole platform is like, I'm a multi hyphenate. I started in this industry because I couldn't make it as an actor. I couldn't get cast. And so I cast myself in a play and produced it. And so as a writer, maybe it's a feature that you love, but maybe you can't afford or know how to do a feature. Maybe you should do that sizzle. Like I said, I didn't make my six episode web series. I made a sizzle for it. And that actually got me the next step of pitching it um, to people that would, you know, be better at making it than me. Um, so I think that there's opportunities for you as a creative to either partner with someone that is like a brand new producer that wants to make something or director um, or just to make maybe a proof of concept, like a short. And when I say short, I mean six pages as opposed to 20 pages. Um, I think people bite it off a lot more than they can chew. Writers have a hard time editing. Um, start small and just start getting your work out there. Cool. Thank you for that advice. You're welcome. And my last question for you, if there's a writer out there that you could sit down and have lunch with and conversation on anything, and they don't have to be alive, they can be dead, or someone unknown or well-known, whoever it is, any writer you want to sit down and talk with. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, who would I pick? Um, oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, the War of Art, uh, what is his name? Uh, it's like one of my favorite books and it's so sad I don't know his name. I'm looking on my Audible because, okay, The War of Art is the name of a book that is it Stephen? Um, I'm trying to find it. Hold on. Stay with me. Stephen Pressfield. Okay. okay. Awesome. He's a writer in the industry and um, he, he wrote this book called The War of Art. And I listen to it every single time I need motivation to just keep going. It's so funny. It's short and it's like motivation. He just to write every day. Just get that junk out um so so i'd love to have lunch with him sometime <laughs>